Hey, it's Efreed Eater. How's it going today? I'm going to try to get through this as quick as I can because there's a lot of stuff. These are the things I got in the last few weeks or the last month. And man, it's a doozy. If you watch the episode about the Pittsburgh Retro Gaming Convention, you know I'm trying to uh, collect all the boxes for the Sega games I had as a kid. And I'm getting to that. I'm, I'm getting through that. And here's a couple boxes I got recently. I got Tiny Toon Adventures, Buster's Hidden Treasure. It's a pretty good game. It's by Konami. Platformer. Play as Buster from Tiny Toon Adventures. Um, I got... Dr. Robotnik's Mean Beam Machine. This was, I think, the first Sega game I ever owned. It was either this or Sonic Spinball. And this is weird because it's basically, I mean, it's Puyo Puyo in Japan. It's basically the exact same game as Kirby's Avalanche, um, except it has characters from the Sonic TV show. It doesn't actually necessarily follow the games as much as uh, the other games do. It's pretty fun. It's a puzzle game. It's pretty standard, though. Stay put. Uh, we got Toxic Crusaders box. Um, again, this similarly, this is a game about the Toxic Crusaders TV show, which was based off of the... Jeez, my nose is really itchy. Anyway, this was based off of the not-for-kids uh, movie, The Toxic Avenger. But this was a kid's TV show about environmentalism. And I used to watch the show a lot as a kid, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I got the game, and it was pretty fun. I don't know if it's the best game, but, uh, it's okay. I got Shadowrun. A box for Shadowrun. And I actually did not have this game as a kid, but I did get it later, maybe when I was, like, 14 or so. Maybe younger than that. And it's a pretty cool game. I've never been able to get very far in it, but I'd like to try it out again. It's, of course, based off of the Shadowrun tabletop game by Fossa. It's MA13. That's that's how they used to rate things. Yeah, this one's GA. Just set these on the floor. They're they're zooming around over there. Just like they would Sega Genesis, Sonic the Hedgehog, Blast Processing, it's all there. Even just in the boxes. Here's two boxes I got for a dollar. Uh, RBI Baseball 4 with 8 meg power. The best just keeps getting better. And what is this? NFL Football 94 starring Joe Montana. Again, it's GA. And this is 16 megs plus battery and it has all 28 teams and over 800 players. And basically I bought these just for the boxes. They actually have everything in there. They're only a dollar. This is actually really good condition. Um, but then I felt kind of bad, and I didn't actually own these games. I, I didn't really want to take them apart. They look like they could be fun, so this one's a little beat up. But, uh, yeah, so I, I was going to put Ranger X in it, but like I said, if you saw the last episode about the Retro Gaming Convention, um, I already got the box for that, so there you go. I'm just going to keep them. Finally, this was a game that appealed to me as a kid for the art, Subterranea. It's very difficult, but it has a lot of cool monsters and stuff. There you go. There's this cool monster there. And if we open up this secret package that's been hanging around... There's a FedEx thing. But inside the FedEx thing, it says extremely urgent. There is a really cool poster with the Subterranea cover art. And the back has some other ads. It talks about Gunstar Heroes. There you go. This 
It's a pretty hard game. It's a lot like the game Solar Jetman for NES. Strangely, I thought this would fit in here, but it, it doesn't. I thought maybe it came with it. But whatever. It's cool anyway. Probably gonna hang it up. Uh, but going back to the game, it's a lot like Solar Jetman, and it is a space uh, game. It's about aliens that have invaded a mining uh, colony, I guess, in space. And you have to protect the scientists, you have to rescue them, or the miners. And you have to transfer them back to the start and avoid the monsters. And it's very, very easy to die. And, uh, I don't know, it's pretty cool. I'd like to check it out again, I'd like to play it again. Now I can play it on my Sega CD. Here's two things that aren't that related, they're just two, uh, movies I got for 99 cents. Uh, X the Unknown, which I've been wanting to watch for a while. And the Maltese Falcon, which I like a lot. I really like these old sort of noir or sci-fi movies. So some cool, uh, very large clamshell movies. All right, now you knew this was coming. Here's some PlayStation stuff. First off, here's some normal jewel cases. Board game Top Shop, a great board game for the whole family. And this is part of the A1 uh, series that were like bargain games which included one of my favorite games, Battle Hunter. And there were some other games that were just called like snowboarding and bowling and billiards and some other ones that also had like the genre like this, like shooter, starfighter, son vein and puzzle, what is it called? Puzzle, star sweep. I don't know, there were a lot of uh, strange budget games at the end of the PlayStation's life cycle. And this was one of them, but I heard this is really good, and I actually was really excited to play it when I saw it back then. Oh, it's a little... There we go. Somebody had that behind... They had the manual behind the, the tab. Which I always used to do as a kid by accident. Anyway, here's the thing I got of Mercari, which I've never used before, and it was, uh, it was a good experience. And, I, you know, there was a discount and stuff. This game's called Blast Chamber. It's 2096, and having a bomb strapped to you is a sport. This is a game that my grandmother bought my friend Augustine uh, when we were kids, along with the game Perfect Weapon or something. That was a really bad one. Um, but it, it's pretty cool. It's four players, and it's like a deathmatch type of thing. There's also one-player mode. It says there are 20 multiplayer and 40 single-player chambers. You, It's like a rotating cube. And you're a very, very little man, and you run around, and there are little power-ups and weapons and things, traps. It was pretty cool. We played it a lot, I remember, a couple days um, when I was over there. So I'm excited to play it. Now I have the multi-tap, so. Pretty cool cover. Finally, here's Colony Wars. I have Colony Wars Vengeance. This is the first game in the series. Um... It's a cool Psygnosis, 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 I don't know. Uh, Psygnosis, um, like space shooter. In Vengeance, you play as the opposing force. I think in this, you play as the League. Yeah, and then I don't know what the uh, force in the other game is called, but you, know, you fly around. I guess it's a pretty long game. It's actually two discs. Go. Oh, what is behind there? Shipwreckers! I do actually want that game. Here are the long boxes for uh, this month. In addition to the ones from the Retro Gaming Convention, these four helped bring my total remaining games down to only 13. We have VR Soccer 96 which will need glued down, which is easy. It's not in the best condition, um, but it is all there. Ooh, the case is even a little cracked. Chip there. Oh, well. VR Sports Money Back Guarantee. The best 32-bit soccer game I have seen. Video game. Weird. Anyway, uh, 
Then another sports game, there is Slam and Jam 96 featuring Magic and Kareem. It's Showtime, the ultimate 3D... The ultimate all-seen-in-3D perspective. Fast break. And you can help send a student to college. See the game manual for details on the Slam and Jam 96 scholarship program. It's pretty cool. That's an ad for Blazing Dragons. Which is interesting because that was actually, of course, um, the normal jewel case size. And it's always interesting to me how these old games would take up a lot of memory card space. This one only takes up one, but this one takes up five for a basketball game. It seems like a lot. Um, and of course it has multi-tap, which is cool. Here's Road Rash. A lot of the early PS1 games were also on uh, you know, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, 3DO, sometimes Super Nintendo. And here you go, Road Rash. Got a cool purple disc. Pretty much like mint condition manual. Um, Jesus Christ, my nose is itchy. Anyway, I think it's interesting it has a picture of the band Swerve Driver. Oh, it says, Swerve Driver heats things up with an exclusive full-length video. So this has more, uh, this has, like, actual songs from bands. Music from the hot A&M bands, like Soundgarden, Hammerbox, Paw, Therapy, Swerve Driver, and Monster Magnet. So all kind of early 90s stuff. It says there's 25 minutes of video. And the graphics look a little better than Sega Genesis. Finally, here is the well-loved Rayman, a game I've never actually played. It says it's pushed the technology envelope to the limit. I kind of doubt that, but it does look very nice. It's a 2D platformer. It was interesting because early on, Sony didn't really want 2D games, um, but Ubisoft did it. And you all know Rayman. He's this guy with no like legs, really, or arms, but he has hands and feet. The case is a little cracked, but that's not so bad. Um, yeah, I've never actually played it, so I'm, I'm actually really excited. As I mentioned, only 13 long boxes left, so stay tuned while I get to all 102. Some of them are going to be a little hard, but I'll get there. Now, speaking of PlayStation, I got all these PS2 memory cards from Japan, and there's a lot of unique uh, looks for these that you don't really see in America. Um, and I'm actually going to be talking about PlayStation memory cards in a future episode, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just know there are a lot of them now. Yep. Now here are a lot of things from Nintendo. Now I got two new GameCube games. I only have six at the moment, but counting these I have eight. I got the Resident Evil Remake that I watched my friend Shane play when we were younger. It always looked really cool. The graphics were great compared with the original Resident Evil. There were a lot of cool camera angles, and there were some new weapons. It seemed a little harder, though. Um, so it's, I don't know, Resident Evil. I also got F-Zero GX. F-Zero is my favorite racing series. I love the fast pace, the sci-fi stuff, the characters. You have Captain Falcon, Pico, Samurai Goro. It's a great series. And Nintendo, come on, make another one. This one was cool because you could take your memory card to the arcade and link it to the uh, F-Zero GX arcade machine, which I've never seen. But uh, I guess if I ever see one, I can do that. <laughs> Here's a DS game, Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. I still have to finish The Wind Waker to play this. I've been really excited about Zelda since Breath of the Wild, though. And I'm going to start playing the Oracle games. I have both of them, so I can uh, link them up and do all the fun stuff. And yeah, this, this game, Phantom Hourglass, kind of weird. You use the touch screen for everything, from what I understand. And you keep going back to one of, the, like, this certain dungeon. But I am excited to play it, because it is Zelda. <laughs> Here's a Japanese Super Famicom game. Uh, Super Gusen Oyoyo. It's a puzzle game, kind of like Lemmings. You have these little kids, and um, I'm not really sure. There's these other characters there that you kind of, like, rescue. But basically, you build um, a map, like a way for these characters to get to the exit door. And there's a flood coming up, so you only have so much time. They walk constantly in a certain direction. If they hit a small wall, they'll climb it. But if they hit a larger wall, they'll turn around. 
you have to guide them, and it can be tough to get them to the exit without getting flooded. I'm not very good at this game. Here's an N64 controller pack from Mario Kart 64. It has this man, Wario, on it. Um, I don't know. I just feel like you need a lot of these because they don't hold a lot. Um, I have three now, and I like this one with the Wario sticker on it the best. Here's three Game Boy games. The kind of goofy looking, at least gameplay wise, play action football. The graphics are like little dots. It's not very appealing. And the much more appealing, the Smurfs, Platformer, and Mickey's Dangerous Chase. These are actually pretty fun. Play action football, it might be fun, but it, the presentation, man, it's kind of rough. Here's something you don't see every day from me. I got the Super Mario Galaxy game for Wii, and here's the coin. It's the free commemorative launch coin. It was not free for me, it was about $5. There's a coin, it's pretty neat. I like having these little coins for video games and other um, collectibles. I have all the Tenchi Muyo coins, and I have the, uh, what are the other ones? Tenchi Muyo, Nino Kuni, and Breath of the Wild. So now I have Super Mario Galaxy. I was going to be getting a Wii recently, but I decided against it because I've uh, been spending a lot of money. But I will get one coming up. I want to get the Red Mario Wii. And there are a, a few Wii games I would like to play, and, and this is one of them. Anyway, I'll see you again next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more video game stuff. Have a good one, and we'll see you.